We're gonna go over strength training for hurling. And we're gonna start right now. First, let's just cover this. I don't think I've ever seen a strength training for hurling video. And this game is absolutely fantastic. I believe it's known as the fastest game on grass and once you start watching it it's really really fun to watch because of how quickly the game is executed and that first key aspect is that we're playing the game of hurling with a hurley or a stick a hurling stick and so that has to be factored into the lens around strength training that has to be factored into the lens around dynamic trunk control. And so that's gonna have a major impact. I believe most of our plyometric work could be executed with that stick in our hand. So that first key aspect is that when we're starting to do reactive based exercises, we can do them and, and progress through these exercises without the hurley. But then as we become more and more advanced, I do believe there is a payback from executing high speed movements like jumps, like hurdle hops even, with that stick in our hand because now that's going to lead to greater rates of dynamic trunk control okay so that can help us even when we're running sprints based off of how we actually have to use that when we're running at full speed and even if we're dribbling that first key aspect is learn progressions of plyometrics implement plyometrics and then as you become more elite with the execution of those plyometrics, use the stick. Now the second key aspect, we've got to think about the rules of the game. So the ball I believe is known as a silotar or silotar. We're going to have 15 players to a side. The games are typically 30 to 35 minute halves and the ball can be hit upwards of 150 kilometers per hour, which is absolutely wild. I actually think as an American, it's like watching an actually enjoyable game of baseball. Baseball. baseball was played with actual sprinting and goals that were actually the goals to score. Maybe baseball would be a little bit more fun to watch. So one thing that we've got to think about is that because it's such a high speed, we've got 15 players covering this massive field. And then the game is played over 30 to 35 minute halves where there's running included at all times, I would focus on some type of power endurance. Okay, so we talked about plyometrics and we talked about advancing your plyometric capability to using the stick. The next aspect would be looking at how can we improve our power endurance. So we would be running sprints very, very rapidly. And I think about this almost like basketball. So if we would look at basketball players, yes, they're huge individuals, six, seven, six, eight, six, nine, right? just very, very tall. Let's think about shrinking basketball players down to being anywhere between you know 5'9 and 6'1, something like that. That 6'1 would probably be a larger uh, hurler. But then what we would end up doing is training them very, very similarly. They are both really, really technical sports that have quite a bit of running. So power endurance is going to be that second key aspect that we have to look at. We want to train power output by doing explosive movements like technical coordination exercises like cleans like power snatches like fast back squats single leg squats we also want to train the ability to produce locomotive power so that could be doing sprints up a hill that could be doing sprints with a sled behind us and training through that velocity decrement but then we also need to make sure that we have that endurance to tap into the power so we need to focus on maybe twice a week we do long slow distance so something on a fan bike at a longer clip. Uh, maybe we can get that endurance just from doing our technical work during practice. That's often what a lot of elite level players might be doing in sports like football, American football, in sports even like wrestling, where they get a lot of conditioning just from their specific practice. So that's where we've got to be as a strength coach to try and gauge, okay, what type of volume are we doing out on the pitch as far as running is concerned, as far as our overall endurance is concerned, and then can we develop that power output and then back end that with some sense of power endurance so that late in a game, let's say we're 70 minutes in and we need to do something crazy to win, to score, well now we can tap into that power endurance. So power endurance and power output are key factors. That third key factor is something that I mentioned during the plyometric discussion, and that's going to be using and training dynamic trunk control. And so what I look at when I'm thinking about dynamic trunk control, 
I would be focusing on how can I kill two birds with one stone. So if I'm training someone on a specific day as a hurler to develop their power output, let's say we're doing speed front squats. So like 60% front squats, nothing crazy, we're, but we're focusing on being very, very explosive. We wanna make very, very twitchy athletes. I think about hurlers, one through the lens of the basketball player, but two through the lens of like a long jumper, but they've got to have the endurance. If I'm doing a contrast method, I would use the garage strength contrast method here, and we would do explosive front squats or explosive single leg squats, moving that quickly. And then we would train some type of reflexive movement. So we would create some type of rapid sequence. So a sequence of jumps that would force some type of trunk control. And trunk control is where we're gonna have good stability through our abs, good stability through our back, good stability and co-contractions in our hip so that we can track balls at high speed. We can track where players are moving at high speeds and that's gonna help us with passing, with dribbling while we're running very, very rapidly. So that's how I would train the aspect of trunk control. We would do some type of accessory work and accessory work would be where we wanna see some hypertrophy. So if we have an individual, an athlete that is more prone to hurting their knees or hurting their ankles, or even potentially some type of shoulder issues from the contact, well then we're gonna use hypertrophy movements to train the stability in those joints to protect them from injury, okay? So we could use accessory movements to train the hypertrophy to get a little bit bigger muscles. So let's think about sled pull backwards, sled push forward, single leg squats for higher reps, you know, with just holding dumbbells. Doesn't have to be really crazy heavy, but then we're gonna use the garage strength contrast method to continuously develop that power along with that dynamic trunk control. That's gonna be a key factor to executing better technique. If we have optimized dynamic trunk control, we can execute better passing. We can execute better shots. So that's a key factor that we have to think about when we're actually training athletes, and especially hurlers, is like, this is a very technical and very fast sport. And it takes a while. The game is a long game. So we're not looking to make big hulking shot putters. We're looking to make very, very fast individuals that can hold 85 to 90% of their speed at around 55 to 60 minutes. And we also have to make sure that they're very stable through trunk control and through plyometric movements so that they can execute the technique at very high speed. So there's a lot of different sequences that we can do in training to optimize that so that they can then in turn optimize their performance out on the pitch. And then finally, I would say there is gonna be some points in the off season that you can train maximal strength. Strength. And so you might train maximal strength through a back squat, through a bench press, executing maybe heavier pull-ups to help with your upper body, with your striking ability. That can happen at certain periods of the off season, but it's not the end all be all. The main goal is going back through and saying, max strength can be trained, let's say eight to 10 weeks in the off season. Then we wanna take that max strength and develop a large amount of power output using technical coordination movements, using the plyometrics, using that dynamic trunk control, using the garage strength contrast method. We wanna make sure we have a stable athlete by training hypertrophy movements. So looking at leg curls, sled pulls backwards, sled pushes forward, doing shoulder accessory movements, doing lots of rows to make sure our shoulders are stable. Maybe even doing some type of tibialis work, maybe even doing a lot of PVC pipe work, walking on a PVC pipe to make sure our ankles are stable. And then in turn, that creates an individual who maybe once or twice a week, we hit with some type of long, slow distance work. When we're hitting them with that long, slow distance, work we're concurrently training once or twice a week with high speed sprinting so sprinting up a hill or even focusing on sled pulls and then we're trying to elicit a positive response with their power endurance from their technical work out in practice if we start to notice around the 50th 55th 60th minute that these players are gassing hard and they're letting down the other 14 players out on the pitch well we need to address that as far as their endurance is concerned and so you've got to play this game of chess with resistance based training specific to hurling and if you guys need help with your hurling training head over to peakstrength.app the google play store or the apple ios store i would recommend downloading peak strength you're gonna get seven free days of training you're gonna get five free workouts i would click on and select the lacrosse program or 
head over to garagestrength.com and email me directly because I want to get into that hurling world. This sport is absolutely fantastic and I would love to be a part of it and help one of you hurlers out there become one of the best in the entire world because remember, freaks, if you want to become a champion, you've always got to cultivate your power. Peace.